Welcome to Pet Pro, a show for you and your pets. We're out on the farm today and we're going to learn about longhorn cattle, goats, a little Angus calf, and some chickens. These cattle are known as the Texas Longhorns. They originally come from Texas, but they are being bred in the Pacific Northwest now too. They are known for their characteristic horns, whereas most cattle we see have been dehorned so they don't grow their horns to protect people. But these guys are bred for their horns, and their horn span can be up to 80 inches from tip to tip. They come in diverse coloring patterns, although dark red and white color mixes are the most dominant you'll see. They're a, normally a very gentle breed of cattle despite their sharp horns, and they're also very intelligent, so they're being trained as riding steers. This little guy is Mason. Mason is a baby Angus, and we'll see him in a minute. But isn't he cute? He lives here on the farm with Molly. This is one. Molly is a Mama La Mancha goat, and La Manchas are known for not having long ears like their other friends and goats do, like these guys. These guys are boar goats, and boar goats are known for their meat. They're a meat goat, and these guys are just baby goats that live with Molly. And then back to Mason. And Mason is an Angus cow, and he is three months old right now. And he's going to grow up to be a, probably either somebody's pet or a meat cow, but he's really friendly to people, but he's pretty shy with other cows, and that's why he's not in the other cattle population with the longhorns. He lives over here with the goats. And so in a second here, we're going to learn about milking. And Molly is in milk, and she is very good at giving about a half a gallon of goat milk a day. That's a lot. And now, Charles is going to show us how you trim a goat's hooves. Don't clip this. Extra little flab off. Cut off these two the, the flabs on the corners, the edge. You got some over here. Just a little tiny growth. So I'll trim off the tips of those. Just I see this extra little flab you just want to cut off. This will just help them because in the wild they would move a couple miles a day on the rocky mount, the rocks and stuff. But here they don't have too many rocks to climb on, so you just got to do it yourself. So, how'd you become so knowledgeable in all this? My dad just taught me all this. I've been chewing with my dad since. If these goats were wild, they'd be in rocky terrain and walking all the time, and their hooves would normally be worn down. But, since they're domestic and living in a field and in a corral, they need regular hoof trimmings because their hooves are not worn down naturally. And so they just need a quick trim every four to six weeks to see how it, so they don't grow so long. As you can see, it just mainly takes one tool, unlike the horse who has a farrier who has several different tools and things that he uses. Just one little nipper is about all you need for a goat's hoof. And you have to be careful because you can get too close and yet they do have soft parts and they are a cloven hoof animal as opposed to a horse and they don't always cooperate with you. They only have a short patient span so that's why it's better to have a couple people helping you out.
I am in goat porridge and chicken porridge. Cool. This is a large breed chicken called a New Hampshire and this little bird is about a month old and Charles is going to tell us a little bit more about chickens. And under a year is called a cockerel and a rooster over a year is called a cock. A hen under a year is called a pullet and a hen over a year is called a hen. And this guy wants to get back to his little girls. Yes he does. And what style would you say? He's a New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Thank you for watching Pet Pro. I hope you enjoyed the show. I am Ginger, and we'll see you next time.